it's vitally important that you create your project correctly because that serves as a foundation to the rest of your design. And a lot of times you might just be using the default values. I'm going to show you how it's done correctly. I'm then go to my survey mode. I'm then go to file and select project settings. Before you can bring in a survey, you need to activate the terrain option and go and specify where you want to create this file. Let's call it webinar example. Civil Designer will ask for confirmation. If you want to create this file, it could be that you're selecting a file that already exists. Once you've gone and activated the terrain file, you'll find that the projection settings become active. And this is where you go and specify where in the world your project is situated. You aren't limited to just the northern or the southern hemisphere. And as far as the rest of the projection settings are concerned, we've made it easier for you by giving you the presets button. Where you could, for instance, go and specify where in the world your project is situated. You could go and browse through the different options. You could also go and put in a certain system here and Civil Designer will search for those systems. Alternatively, if you go and type in a country, Civil Designer will give you the different options associated to that country. You would then go and select the system to use and click on OK you'll see that automatically the hemisphere has changed to Northern Hemisphere. I'm then use the traditional option. This particular project that, or the survey that I'm then be bringing in is done in Cape Town. These settings are therefore correct. If you're not sure of these settings, it is a very good idea to ask your surveyor. If you've got absolutely no information, you could check on Google Earth, for example. And just to show you, for explanation purposes, somewhere in the Northern Cape, you might have a central longitude of 17. On the outskirts of Natal, you might have a longitude of 33 degrees east. So if you just use the default values, then you always specify that your project is within that band. Closing that, back to our project, I click on OK. Now that we know where in the world your project is situated, we can import the surveyed information. We do so by going to File Import. So it's an ASCII file, single file. Specify the file type and then bring that in. This file type is a comma delimited because our values are separated by commas. Click on Next. I'm going to purposely bring this in with the wrong coordinates so that I can show you what happens. If I go and select this to be our X coordinate, your X coordinate, if you're working in the Southern Hemisphere, should always be a positive number. Then I'm going to go and specify a Y coordinate and then my Z coordinate. Click on Finish. And because I've brought in the incorrect coordinates, Civil Designer does pick this up as an error. It says the data is outside the ALO band so the import is cancelled. Click on OK. Going back to File, Import, ASCII, Single File. Changing the file type back to Data File. Selecting it. Click on Next. This time specify the correct coordinate as my Y, the X code, and then the Z code. If you're going to be doing this numerous times, it may be a good idea to go and save the settings as defaults. If you've got additional information over here, it may be that the surveyor has already triangulated your DTM for you. So then you would go and specify lines 1 through to line 8. Click on Finish. Just a good confirmation dialog box here, making you aware that your coordinates fall within that range. If you're happy with that, click on Yes to continue with the import. Remember that you've got 255 different surfaces to choose from within Civil Designer. Click on OK. 
Now you probably can't see the dots on the screen, so I'm going to go and turn on the elevation. When you do this kind of thing and you import information or survey data incorrectly, sometimes the block structure of the database becomes unbalanced, typically as a result of adding large amounts of data outside the original site limits. Therefore, your efficiency can degrade. So it may be a good idea to rescale your survey. Going to terrain mode, tools, and selecting rescale survey. This function resets the block structure by performing an automatic ASCII export and then a re-import. So it's using the site's coordinates, specifying your site diameter, if you want to go and add constants to your survey points, this is also a very useful function to utilize. Turning that off, click on OK, and then turning off my elevations there. You can see it's also recentered my page, and I may want to go and make that bigger. So again, I go to my CAD mode, go to settings, drawing settings, and then just update my paper size here to an A1. If you do need to see your points, you can also go to Settings, View Settings, select Points, and specify a certain style. And if you want to go and add additional to that with a point size. Once you've brought in your survey, remember that we are all human, we make mistakes, so it may be a good idea to check for duplicates. You go to your survey mode, go to editing, and select remove duplicates. I'm going to select use height in comparison, so that is if our y, x, and z coordinate is the same, Civil Designer would automatically remove one of the duplicated points. Specify where you want the results, and in our case, zero points were removed. Before you can put in contours, you need to triangulate. You go to terrain mode, go to model on top, select triangulate in memory, specify the maximum distance between your survey points, which surface you're working on, and click on OK. From that, you are able to turn on your contours and then turn them off again. Before you do any design, especially if you've inherited the survey from somebody else, you want to go and validate it to see if there's any errors. It may be at a later stage in the design process you're doing a road design and you find that you're getting errors because you don't have sufficient ground information. So it may be a good idea to go and validate your model. You go to model on top, Scroll down to Validate Model, specify which surface you're working with, and in this case no perimeter could be found. Polygon closes on itself. When I click on OK here, Civil Designer would then zoom into the position of our error. A very powerful function to get rid of that error is to go back to Model, Remove Invalid Lines, click on OK, if I now go back to Model, Validate Model, click on OK, you'll see that the error message has disappeared. I'm going to press S on my keyboard and turn off my elevations. A lot of our clients wish to have the DTM shading turned on. So what they normally do is they go to the display settings, they go and select shading settings, and they don't quite find what they're looking for over here. So if you turn on slope shading and you activate that, you'll get something similar to that. But what I would suggest you do is rather go to that slope shading, deactivate it, go to surfaces instead, and then just switch on the shading over there. So one surface will have the same color and if need be, if you want to see what's beneath the ground, you do have the option to turn on the transparency of your shading. So at this stage, you would be able to continue with the rest of the design 
modules.